Hey, I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. You found the Sales Hunter podcast. Today, we're going to talk about, well, the Olympics, the Winter Olympics, and sales. What do the two have in common? We're going to hear from Johnny Quinn, Olympic bobsledder. And this is going to be a fascinating one because we're going to tie together what it takes to be successful in sales, very similar to what it takes to be successful as an Olympic bobsledder. And the show begins right now. You're listening to the Sales Hunter Podcast with Mark Hunter, where the focus is to help you as a sales leader sell with confidence and integrity. And now here's your host. Our guest today is Johnny Quinn. He lives about 15 miles away from me, but we met a quarter of the way around the world in Lithuania about a month or two ago. But let me tell you something. You could care less about that. This is He is one of only three individuals who have played in the NFL and then got on, and then went on to be in the Winter Olympics. So, hey, welcome, Johnny Quinn. Thanks for joining us. Mark, good to see you, my friend. Hey, it, it is great. Now, I, I, I got to ask you quick because the audience wants to know, you're a four-man bobsled. This is a lot of meat going down the hill. How fast are you going? And uh, you're the number three person, right? That's right. That's right. So there's Mark, two ahead of you and one behind you. That's right. What are you, Mark, what are you <laughs> looking at? What are you looking at as you're going down nothing, the hill? Nothing. Nothing. You know, the, the cool runnings, which really put bobsledding on the map, cinematized, looking around and moving around. Mark, when you get in that sled, only the driver can see. Everybody else has to be uh, below the driver. So you're not it, almost like you're in a wind tunnel. You don't want to be a sail. So you need to be low. Mark, on average, we go 80 miles an hour with the fastest track in the world in Whistler, Canada. There we went 94 and a half miles an hour. Hey, think about that down an icy mountain with no seat belts. It's a crazy, crazy ride. And you're all of what, about six inches off the ground? That's right. Yeah, you're, we use the, they're called runners, uh, the, the four different blades. And uh, you were just, I mean, you were smoking across that ice. And uh, it's, it's quite the adrenaline rush. I guess so, man. Is it, <laughs> is it more of an adrenaline rush at the top of the hill or at the bottom of the hill? The entire operation. Each track lasts about a minute long. And, you know, when you're in these high pressure curves, Mark, and you're pulling four to five Gs, and at any time that bobsled can crash, you, all of your senses, all of your adrenaline, look, everything is dialed in until you cross that finish line and you start to uh, feel the bobsled come to come to a stop. <laughs> wow, that, that, that is amazing. OK, let's talk about this because you had also an experience in the NFL. You go to the Olympics and now you, you're in sales. I mean, right. and, and you talk about sales. Tie all this together for the audience. Yeah, you know, there's so much low-hanging fruit from sports into the marketplace, particularly in the sales world. You know, I, I compare it to three things, just like in bobsled, very similar to sales. Mark, th there's a start, there are twists and turns, and then there's a finish line. And when you cross that together, whether that, again, uh, in the in the marketplace corporately or whatever that might look like, organizational standpoint, or even athletically, Mark, the, those features, the start, the twist and turns, and the finish, that's what separates the pretenders from the contenders on who is going to make that play, again, whether in sport or business. Wow. Okay. Now let's unpack this some more because you talk about pretenders and contenders. That's right. So how do you stay in the game? What, what would you tell salespeople? Hey, it's, it's not going well out there. And you, you, you share in your story. You, you write in your book, Push. You talk about some of the stories, some of the problems you went through. What does it take to stay focused, to stay in the game, to keep making it happen? Yeah, one of the things I speak and teach on, Mark, quite a bit is the ability to borrow wisdom, to, to learn from people who might be two, three, four steps down the road that we want to go. And so let's say we are in that season of life where, you know, it, it's no after no after no after no. Look, I can give some fancy line that no means next. And there's truth to that. But how do we dig in and weather that, those storms of no's that all sales professionals go through? Well, we need to borrow wisdom. And, and so let me unpack this, Mark. I want to know, what are you watching? What are you reading? Who are you listening to? Because again, whether it's sport or business, I am observing and I'm learning from men and women who have 
found a way to get the job done with the current resources available. And so, Mark, I'm, I'm subscribing to blogs. I'm listening to podcasts, shows like your show to understand and pick up little nuances and techniques just like I did in the Olympics, but I'm applying it in the sales world. Okay. Now this is pretty powerful because what you're talking about is, and everything you said is really about dealing with yourself before you even start dealing with the customer. And yeah, I totally buy into that. But again, how do you get yourself to the top of the hill? I mean, yeah. I, you know, yeah, one of, the, one of the concepts I use, and I got this from a guy by the name of Darren Hardy, and he wrote a book called The Compound Effect. Fantastic read, but something I took out of there is Darren Hardy talked about uh, these bookends. We all have bookends in our day. When you wake up in the morning, that's a bookend. And then when you lay down at night, that's the other bookend. And, and a, as we know, everybody gets pulled in multiple directions. And so if you can control your bookends, and so I'm very diligent about this, Mark. I was diligent about it in sport. I'm diligent about this in the business place is I protect and I organize my bookends. And so, Mark, I have a morning routine and I have an evening routine. So no matter where I get pulled throughout the day, right, because sometimes surprises happen. They happen to all of us. I can reground myself, so to speak, and make sure that I'm working on high impact, high profitable tasks. And it's my bookends that help keep me in alignment. Does that make sense? Yes, I do. And, and, and I love how you phrase that. And Darren Hardy, of course, brilliant individual. Yeah. And I like this because I find with every top performer, they always have a very set routine to their day. You know, I have a very set routine, how I wake up in the morning, time I wake up in the morning, what I do that first 90 minutes of the day, very set routine. And again, it, so would, would you say you would have made it to the Olympics without having that bookend philosophy? I don't think so. One, one of the things that I did when I got to the Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid, New York, I, I'm in upstate New York. It's very cold in uh, upstate New York uh, in bobsled, as you can imagine, is I purposefully and actively, Mark, searched and, and hunted down, so to speak, the Olympic medalists. I want to know, Mark, what time are they going to bed? What time are they getting up? When we all eat in the cafeteria at the Olympic Training Center, what foods are they taking off the food line? What foods are, there, are they passing? I'm observing their workouts. What type of lifting are they doing? How do they have their lift, lift schedule? Mark, it's the same thing I do in the marketplace, right? As a full-time keynote speaker, I, I am selling to event planners and meeting planners. And so I am searching for the pain points so I can deliver that solution. And isn't that sales 101? Aren't we here to help provide solutions for our prospects and for our clients? It's the same thing. I, I got to back up the bus there because it sounds like you cheat. It sounds like you <laughs> cheat by copying off of other people. And I love it. I love it. Great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, why should we go through pain-filled agony of trying to figure out something ourselves when we can learn and listen and watch others who have gone before and learned from them. Mark, here's what I've noticed. And, and to continue to, to walk through someone who might be struggling right now in, in the sales space, when this happens, and, and we all go through this, Mark, the tendency is to isolate. The, the, the tendency is to, you know, kind of, kind of take a step back, um, start to, you know, uh, reconsider our career choices. Is this right for me? And, and Mark, I would say at this point, when, when the season is slow, it is time to double down, my friend. When I got to the Olympics, when I was in the NFL, here's what I realized. I'm in this room with the best of the best, right? Career, uh, just the titans of the industry. And I've noticed that they have access to resources and they're actively searching out coaches and mentors and content that they're consuming and the fuel that they're putting in their body. It's the same thing in sales, Mark. And so if we are in a season of life that we're struggling, oh my goodness, this is when we need to plug in to tools and resources and people that we can pour into and help move us forward. Wow. I love that. The other night I was, I was having dinner with a couple of absolute top performers in sales. I was in Atlanta, absolute top performers. And both of them made the comment that they have coaches. They have coaches themselves. And, you know, we always think of it. it it's, it's the lower person. It's the, it's the underperformer that needs to help. These were top performers. 
And yeah, that that is so cool about that. So, I mean, how much time should we spend developing our craft versus executing our craft? You know, I'm in, you know, we'll say, okay, hey, you know, I'm listening to this. I'm, I'm a salesperson. I got to make quota every quarter. But how much time should I be spending working to become a better salesperson versus being a better salesperson? Yeah, I don't know if there is an exact number of time, uh, you know, throughout the day, but I, I do think depending on the season of life that someone is in, we have to ask the question in the morning when we get out of bed is where can I work on the business instead of inside the business? And I think what that does is that gives you a framework, right? A, a tool that you can look at your day and say, okay, I'm going to X off, you know, this slot for professional development or for sales training, or I'm going to download a podcast. And what that takes, Mark, at the end of the day is it takes discipline. Doesn't matter how many degrees you have. Doesn't matter last year's commission check. It takes discipline. And the men and women in sales who win most of the time, Mark, they're disciplined in that type of development. I would say anybody who wins consistently is sure. disciplined because yeah. I mean, you, you, you can, you know, I mean, a blind squirrel will find an occasional acorn, right, in the right, order, right. but they're not going to do it time and time again. And it is discipline. In fact, right, right now, that's a perfect segue because I do want to talk about sales logic live. You know, most of you probably know I host a podcast sales logic every Saturday morning with Meredith Elliott Powell, and we're doing a live event May 24th. I'm going to put the show. I'm going to put the link in the show notes but you can join us here in Dallas or online. What is it about? It's about helping you up your craft. But hey, let's get back to the interview here. I want to talk more about discipline because, you know, you, you had a great high school career. You go on to college and you talk about it in your book, Push. And I, I suggest people pick up the book, Push by Johnny Quinn. Read it because you talk about how you were playing football, but you also ran track and your your football coach was a little bit, mm. That's right. Not too happy about that. That's right. How yeah. did you, you know, and, and, and yet you wouldn't, you would not have gotten to the Olympics if you had right. not done track. Right. Right. You know, it's funny you brought that up. What I like to do, and, and I, I did this in sport. You mentioned that, that, uh, that, that collegiate conversation I had with my football coach where, you know, here I am on a football scholarship asking to go, you know, participate in another sport. Mark, I, I like to start with the end in mind. And so for me at the time, right before the Olympics even came on my radar, it was, I need, I want to play in the NFL. I want to go to the highest level of professional football. And so by starting with the end in mind, Mark, it laid out, it, it almost gave me a blueprint on, well, I need to get faster. I need to get stronger. I need to be more disciplined in my route running or, you know, whatever it may be. And so it, what it did is it gave me the next logical step to work towards the end in mind. And so in sales, what, what is the end in mind for our listeners? You know, is, is it a revenue goal? Is it a is it a, an incentive trip? What is the end in mind? Mark, too many times I see people not taking time to put a mark out there because I think they're afraid that they're not going to make it. And so I, what I've noticed, and I did it in sport, I do it now in business, is let's start with the end in mind. Wow. You just said, you know, put a mark out there because too many people are afraid they're not going to achieve yeah. it. So when it comes to goal setting, should you establish a goal that you can achieve or a stretch, stretch, stretch goal that even if you miss, you're still ahead? Mark, I do both. I love those big, hairy, audacious, crazy goals that, you know, if you say it out loud, it's People are like, oh, what, what is wrong with that? You know, oh my goodness, that is just insane. I love those. But Mark, we need to set small miniature goals along the way so that we can evaluate and make sure that we are moving towards that. Let me just give you a practical example. I'll give you two. Mark, I want to speak in front of 20,000 people at one time. That's a big goal. Big goal. To date, Mark, I've spoken at five to 5,000 people at once. I did it for Lockheed Martin pre-COVID. And so, okay, I have these small little goals that are going to get me towards 20,000. Think about this relationally, Mark. Uh, I've been married for nine years to my lovely wife, Amanda. At year 30, right, that's 21 years from now. At year 30, when Johnny Quinn, when I come home and I push that little button in my car and that garage door goes up, Mark, do 
do I want my wife or Amanda saying, oh, Johnny's home or, oh, Johnny's home. And so the daily actions I do today in business, in my marriage, in other relationships matter. It's the same thing in sales, Mark. What are you doing daily that matters? Wow. Okay. So what does your daily routine look like? Yeah. So I'm up at 530 in the morning. I've got quiet time. I oh, typically no, like to just read. Just a second. Just a second. Just a second. Five. You are a slacker. <laughs> You're you know, I've read that. I've got two young kids. I got two kids under five. Okay. So yeah, I need right, a little bit right, of grace right, right. on that you're one. Right. Hey, yeah. when I had young kids, there was no way I, yeah. I, I know. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, 5 30 in the morning, a little bit of quiet time. I like to read one, at least one chapter um, out of a book. And, and I, I vary, you know, whether it's finance, Christian inspirational, uh, professional development, doesn't matter. But I like to get one chapter. And what that does is over a course of a year, it allows me to read about 24 books a year. And so I'm not overwhelmed. But I do that before anybody gets up. And then I'm with my family in the morning. When I get to the office, Mark, if you've read the book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People by Stephen Covey, he talks about you got to put the big rocks in first so then the little ones fit in the box as well. Mark, I do the hard things first. And, and, and that could be... Outbound calling, that's hard for some people. Um, whatever's on my plate, I try to do the hard things first because that's when I have the most energy in the day. And so I do this consistently. Let me just give you a practical example, Mark. Let's take next week. Let's just pick Wednesday of next week. I'm not traveling. I don't have a speaking engagement. It's a typical Wednesday. Mark, when I get to the office on Wednesday, I am going to pick up the phone. And I am going to outbound call my prospects like it's the best Wednesday I have ever had in my entire life. Now, it's just a regular Wednesday, Mark. There's nothing special about it. But what I know is that the seeds that I plant today, there's going to be a harvest in the future. So that's kind of what my daily routine looks like. Yeah, I, I tell you what, that is so spot on because again, wh whatever your day brings, it's up to you to make the most of it. That's right. And and and, and I absolutely and doing that hard thing first. You know, I always I always remark Stephen Covey wrote the book Seven Habits, and then it took him twenty years to come out with the eighth. You know, the eighth <laughs> thing. You know, yeah, so anyway, yeah. but anyway, but but he, I, I love that whole premise, and that's why I have what I call the ten a.m. rule. It's accomplishing yeah. something significant before 10 a.m. because it's I amazing how it motivates you and drives you forward. So, okay. So now you're, let's shift gears a little bit. You're in front of a customer. You're trying to close the deal and they want to throw some more curves at you. Well, what are some Olympic wisdom that you can share? That yeah. Helps yeah. Keep us in the game. Yeah. So my first, you know, my first tip tool was we need to borrow wisdom, learn from people who are further down the road of life than we are. But to answer your second question, I want to go to my second tool. And I learned this at the Olympic Training Center after we went through all of these strength finder tests, personality tests, Mark. I mean, they take us through everything. I don't know if you've taken one, two or, or 10 like I have. Um, but what we need to do is we need to be intentional and listen in the direction we want to go. Mark, at the end of the day, if you study game theory or understand a little bit about how kind of the human mind works. Mark, I went to the Olympics. It's cool. I'm a U.S. Olympian. That's cool. But at the end of the day, the customer doesn't care about my story. They care about their story. They're the hero. And so I need to position myself in a way to make the customer the hero, to provide the solution to the challenge, to, to as, as you would say, Mark, to deliver the outcome by working with me or using my product or, or you know, engaging in my service, whatever that might be. I need to show them that they're the hero of their story. Oh, I love that. Now, you and I had a chance to meet. We were speaking at a conference a quarter of the way around the world in Lithuania and had a chance to hear you speak and you were riveting. And you spoke about a little situation in a bathroom. You want to <laughs> tell the audience real, real quick about that? Yeah, too funny. And how it changed your life. It, it really did. I was in the Olympic Games. We just walked in opening ceremonies. I mean, just think about, you know, walking in opening ceremonies with the best athletes in the world, incredible venue. And the next day I got stuck in my bathroom in the Olympic Village 
Long story short, I couldn't get out, so I had to break down this bathroom door. Got a pretty good sense of humor, so I took a picture. I put it on social media, and in 24 hours, it was retweeted 28,000 times, seen by 10 million people across the world. It went viral. I had a viral experience. It was crazy, but it truly opened the door to some unexpected opportunities. And uh, Mark, I should have kept some of that door. I didn't know that a door in Russia would have created so much excitement. But now what it, what is interesting about that is, is, is you were taking a shower as you write in your book because you were getting ready to go have an interview, I believe, with NBC, yeah. right? That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And think about this. This is the same thing that happens that you did not let this you could easily have let this situation fluster you and right. say, I'm not going to make the interview. But right. your team, I, I presume your team was being interviewed. That we were. That's right. So you felt an obligation to be there. You had to be there. And then suddenly, you know, even though something eh, had happened, you stayed in the game right that's there. Right. I think that's a real strong message for salespeople. And then suddenly here comes this gift of this, this thing going viral on social right. media. Yeah. I mean, you, you ran with that. You ran with yeah. it. You, you, you were looking for more bathroom doors, weren't you? No, no. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And two days later, I got stuck in an elevator. And so at that point, nobody wanted, you know, no teammate wanted to, to, to travel with me to the venue. Mark, it, it, it's funny. And, and, and you know, in, in that Murphy's Law and everything, if something will go wrong, it will go wrong. And uh, and so it's 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 being prepared. It's understanding that um, there are men and women who have actually won with less resources than you have access to today. And, and when I when I ponder on that concept, Mark, that that hits me a little bit differently. What it does is is when I am um, feeling down or sulking, um, it, it it repositions my purpose to understand that hey, climates can be tough. But there are people winning in this climate. I need to evaluate some, do some self awareness on where I'm, you know, lacking in other areas that I can improve in. Wow, I, I love what you say. We got, we got to wrap this up here in a bit. But we're, we're talking with Johnny Quinn, U.S. Olympic bobsledder, and he is talking as a champion, and he is. And yet, the setbacks he incurred in his life, from the number of injuries in terms of football and NFL and so forth. You've had more than your fair share of injuries. You could easily have said, screw it, I'm packing it in. I'm going to go, you know, continue my life in McKinney, Texas, which let's see, Texas doesn't get too much snow. Texas That's doesn't right. have to be mountain, but you still want to. But you persevered. And I think that alone is a huge lesson for all of us. It's only through your perseverance that you got to where you are. And, mm -hmm. and again, I, I, I give you a tremendous I heap tremendous credit on you for seeking the wisdom and, and, and your faith drives much of it too. And I love that. I love that about you. Um, give one more tip. What, what would you tell the salesperson out there who is trying to say, I, I got to make this number. If I don't make this number this quarter, I'm gone. Yeah. You know, th this, this is a concept we've all heard. You probably heard it in first grade. It's two words. Don't quit. It's a simple concept, but something that in this day and age, it's tough to find somebody who can push through. Don't quit. You've got this. I love that. Hey, how do people get in touch with you? Yes. All my social media handles, Johnny Quinn USA at Johnny Quinn USA. And then my website, Johnny Quinn USA.com. Would love to connect. And I love that whole name, Johnny Quinn USA. Yes, <laughs> I, lo I love that. Anyway, Thank hey, you. you've been listening to the Sales Hunter podcast. My name is Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. Of course, you know that already. And hey, I do want to invite you to Sales Logic Live, May 24th. Meredith Elliott Powell, co host with me on Sales Logic. We're doing a live event in Dallas, Texas. You can join us live in Dallas or online. We'll put the link in the show notes. But we want to say thank you right now to Johnny Quinn. Thank you so much for being part of the show. And with that, we want to say, hey, you've been listening to the, the Sales Hunter podcast. Each week, you get two episodes, one, a short one, with a, just a concise tip that you can use right now. And the second episode, a longer one, like you're hearing here. Why? Because we wanted to deliver to you tips, insights, strategies, and most of all, proven techniques to help you take your sales to the next game. I'm Mark Hunter, the sales hunter. Thank you, Johnny, for being with us. We'll, we're out of here.